Now we will talk about a simple equation for the slope of a line and take a look at this example. Here are two points marked on a line. This is point one and this is point two. And point one you can see has coordinates two comma three. And point two has coordinates ten comma eight. So the rise you should be able to see that if you go from point one to point two you go up this far that interval on the y-axis is the rise. And you can see that that would have a length of 5. And you get 5 by looking at these numbers. So the rise there is 8 minus 3. Write it that way, right? 8 minus 3. And of course that's 5. But the point is that it's the difference between those two numbers that gives us that interval. And the run, you can see, if we go from point 1 to point 2, the horizontal change is given by that interval on the x-axis. From 2 to 10, the run is obviously 8, but let's think of it as 10 minus 2. Regardless of where those points are, we would take one number and subtract the other to find the change horizontally as we move from point 1 to point 2. Now apply that concept in general. Look at this. These are two points. Let's call this point 1 and point 2, and these could be anywhere. Point 1 has coordinates x1, comma, y1. Let's write that down. x1, y1. And those could be any numbers, x1 and y1. That could be anywhere in the xy plane. And the same with point 2 up here. Point 2, you can see it has coordinates x2 and y2. And so the rise will be that interval on the y-axis. And that would be y2 minus y1 and the run would be this interval on the x-axis. That would be x2 minus x1. So the slope, which is always rise over run, will be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And that's a nice little formula for the slope. If you have two points and you know the x and y coordinates, in other words, if you knew all four of those numbers, you could just put them in and calculate the slope. Another way that that's written sometimes is like this. You see it written slope equals the change in y divided by the change in x. The change in y divided by the change in x. And that's often written like this. This is an important little notation. Delta y over delta x. And that little Greek letter delta right there, that's the Greek letter delta. That's the fourth letter in the Greek alphabet. And that's commonly used in math to mean change in. So when you read this right here in your mind, think change in y. And the delta x is the change in x. This is not delta times y. Don't think of it like that. Delta is not a variable, at least not here. This is delta y. Take that notation as a whole. That's the change in y divided by the change in x. And that's mathematically the same thing as this. y2 minus y1 is the change in y, and x2 minus x1 is the change in x. Now let's look at some examples. Find the slope of the line passing through the points 6, 1 and 10, 3. Okay, these numbers uh, are the coordinates of the two points. Think of this first point as point 1 and the second one as point 2. So this is my x-coordinate for point 1. That's going to be x1 and that's y1. And those are the x and y coordinates of point 2. So that's x2 and that's y2. And sometimes it's helpful to actually write that down and just point out which one is which. Then the slope is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So just put those values from over here into this equation. y2 minus y1, that's going to be 3 minus 1 over x2 minus x1. That will be 10 minus 6. And so that comes out to 2 over 4, which reduces to 1 half. So the line through those two points has a slope of 1 half. Okay, next example, uh, find the slope of the line passing through 5, 8, and 11, 4. 
So we'll call this first point, point 1. So that's x1 and y1, 5 and 8, and these are x2 and y2, 11 and 4. So we'll put those numbers in here, y2 minus y1. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1 will be 4 minus 8 over 11 minus 5. And 4 minus 8 is negative 4, and 11 minus 5 is 6, and negative 4 over 6 will reduce to negative 2 thirds. So this slope is negative, which means if we were to graph the line, it would be falling. And it goes down 2 and over 3, or a slope of negative 2 thirds. And let's look at one more example. And this example has some negative numbers. And this is just to show that the same concept applies, even if there are negative numbers. Just don't get confused with the negative numbers. Here's point 1 and point 2. So the slope will be of course y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and so y2 minus y1 that's negative 2 minus 3 over x2 minus x1 and that's 5 minus negative 4 okay negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5 and 5 minus negative 4 is the same as 5 plus 4, which is 9. So that's our answer, negative 5 over 9. This line, the line through those two points, has a slope of negative 5 ninths.